300x from Maono. Welcome to Tokyo. By the way, this is all like all the sound tests which are going to be part of this video. They are recorded using the Maono PD300x. Of course, also YouTuber has to work so there is no time and that's why I was speeding up all the informational parts which are coming now using a computer and I'm also interested in your opinion what do you think about this sound situation with different voices so thanks for your feedback please write in the comments and not to lose time anymore we jump right in the PD300X dynamic mic let's break it down skip ahead to my sound test or check out the software deep dive if you're really in a hurry there's a quick summary waiting at the end. But for now, let's start from the top. The Mono PD300X comes in impressive packaging. The color scheme is well executed and straight out of the box. You'll notice they're not just targeting PC users, they're going all in for iPhone, iPad, and iPod compatibility. That slick marketing photo on the left suggests you'll be conquering the podcast world while sipping your morning coffee. Yeah, right? Wink, wink. The right side lays down the serious tech specs, built-in software EQ, advanced noise reduction, and, get this, a whopping 192kHz sampling rate at 24-bit depth. While this dynamic microphone doesn't feature 32-bit capability, let's be real, if you know your way around audio and video production, you don't need 32-bit in the studio. Besides, you can always connect it to a 32-bit audio interface via XLR. Problem solved. Speaking of 192 kilohertz, I keep hearing other YouTubers claim as overkill, which I find rather careless depending on the use case. Sure, 48 kilohertz might be enough, perhaps just because Sony established it as a standard at some point. But I disagree. When it comes to sound reproduction, there's no such thing as too much resolution. I explain this in detail in my dedicated video on this topic. The PD300X offers dual functionality. Use it as a classic XLR microphone or connect via USB with Mono's proprietary software, which we'll explore later in this video. Time warp links are below if you want to jump ahead. The package includes a rock-solid shock mount that can be adapted from 5-8-inch 15.875mm to 3-8-inch 9.525mm threading using the accessories in a separate yellow box. One downside, it's quite tricky to detach with the screwdriver if you want to use it on a desk stand. The mic ends up mounted upside down with control buttons at the bottom and inverted labeling. Your options are either using an overhead mic stand or fiddling with the mounting brackets. Not exactly intuitive. In Mono's defense, this mic is primarily designed for permanent studio installation, so this would be a one-time hassle. The included USB cable supports both USB-C and USB-A connections. At 4.9 feet, 1.5 meters, it's a bit short for serious studio use you might need extension cables or longer alternatives. That said, the cable itself feels premium and durable. Honestly, what fascinated me most at first glance was the included pop shield. It comes in an elegant matte gray and features the softest material I've encountered in a pop shield. While other manufacturers use standard foam, Mayono uses what feels like velvet gray super foam. However, I should mention that it doesn't quite deliver on its primary purpose is not as effective at reducing plosive sounds as you'd expect from a pop shield. Even pulling it slightly away from the grill doesn't help much. A comparison with the Mackie EM99B might be interesting here. That's actually whose sturdy desk stand I'm using to mount the Mono. The Mayono PD300X features a seriously robust metal housing, strongly reminiscent of Mackie's EM99B, which I reviewed on this channel about a year ago. You'll find that review in my growing microphone playlist, accessible via the link above. However, the Mono seems quite sensitive to handling noise, whether you accidentally touch it, tap it, or type on the desk nearby. The shock mount appears to promise more than it delivers. For permanent studio installation, you'll definitely want to use an external boom arm with this mic. Back to the comparison. To avoid any confusion, the EM99B is purely an XLR microphone without USB connectivity. Drop a comment if you'd like to see a detailed comparison between these two mics. As mentioned, the PD300X offers both XLR and USB connectivity for various devices, PCs, and Macs naturally, plus iPhone, iPad, and iPod support. Interestingly, it works flawlessly with my old Samsung Android phone, immediately providing direct monitoring through headphones. A cool additional feature 
is the built-in headphone jack, enabling zero latency monitoring of the mic signal. Zero latency means there's no delay between speaking into the mic and hearing the output, something you can't avoid when routing through a computer's sound card. Maono provides two software solutions. First, there's Mono Link, a powerful package that lets you save and recall different user profiles. You can access these either through the function button with custom settings or directly through the software interface. Beyond adjusting volume, levels for headphones, microphone, and input signals, you get access to a solid 10-band equalizer. You can also toggle noise reduction, compressor, and limiter settings on or off. Additionally, Windows users can download Mailno Arena, a software that lets you organize all audio sources within your computer for complete mix control. This tool allows you to store three individual submixes for different scenarios. It provides a schematic visualization of each submix, enabling quick and intuitive fine-tuning of your audio configuration. Like many current hardware audio interfaces, you can access sound effects directly through the software environment. We'll take a closer look at this during the sound test coming up next. So then, as I promised, welcome to the sound test. Now, the May Ono PD300X is connected via USB to this a small, yeah, kind of N100 processor computer. It's functioning, no worries. There is also direct monitoring through this cable uh, to my headphones. And I did not uh, put the uh, Mayono uh, correct because I will use it on a boom arm later. Just to show you, now I'm speaking to the front. Now I'm speaking from the side. Of course, this is like a cardioid or super cardioid pattern. I'm talking from the back, that sounds like this. And we are back now to the front. And as you can see here also, I kind of like took this uh, pop filter a little bit away from here. Of course, when I remove it, sorry about the noise. P -p -p, then you have all this kind of very funny uh, wind uh, pop noise, as you can see here. That's why, of course, the pop filter makes it better, but it's not p -p perfect, but a lot better, especially when you have this little distance here. Once you put it closer, p -p -p, it doesn't function so well anymore. Um, that's it. Let's see what else have we. Let's look in the software here. This kind of like platform, this will also run on a Mac. As you see here, there's a little recorder inside, but the recorder always stops recording while switching over to the scene mode. That's why I'm not using it. And instead I'm recording with OBS Studio. So, and then as you can see here, the microphone is set to a distance from 0 to 10 centimeters, which is also pretty much about the real distance that you're listening to now. And then you have the volume of the headphones, the monitor mixer and the noise gate, which is activated, which means that when I uh, don't speak now while keeping my mouth shut, you won't hear anything. Noise gate means that whenever there is noise lower than minus 25 decibel, the gate is going to close and then, you, uh, or the gate is going to shut and then you don't hear anything anymore. Whereas when I, which is my preference, deactivate the noise gate, you will have the very silent uh, bass, uh, kind of like uh, noise, or the natural noise, let's call it like this, of this microphone which I kind of like, and anyway, you can correct it in post uh, better afterwards. And then they have the mic monitor, PC monitor, headphone, all this. And uh, so, this is like the, the, the neutral microphone, if you will. Because we have the original flat curve here, yeah, same as this one also. I don't have any compressor on, I don't have a limiter on, but let's do this now for demo purposes and it sounds already a little bit more professional, kind of like neutral, like kind of an, on one line, the volume now of my voice. And as you can see here, also I could add a preset, which is the low cut, which means the low frequencies, now they are kind of removed 
or a mid boost which is going back to the flat curve basically but lifting the mid a little bit and then as an alternative you have also a combination of low cut and mid boost which sounds like this so the mids a little bit up and all the low frequencies down so basically that's it if you want to make your own choice i was already mentioning the 10 bands equalizer this is right here you can add some kind of profile if you will this is the high pass filter or low cut filter which is basically the same you can activate it right here and then when you kick it in then all the low frequencies are going to be cut away and then i have only a very thin uh, voice left yeah and then maybe you do like this and you want to cut away some of the higher frequencies which doesn't really make sense you know 22,000 hertz i think this microphone only picks up to 16,000 hertz anyway you can activate also this guy here and then some of the higher frequencies are also gone and you are somewhere in the middle field of the audible uh, frequencies as they say and of course also you can modify these frequency bands in uh, like depending on your preferences you can also go in here and you can change the forms yeah like this one we changed here yeah this and all kind of things possible you can do this uh, yourself and you see this new curve here which is completely absurd so let's just throw it away so this is what you have and then there is also like they were pre-setting a podcasting thing this is what the podcasting thing sounds like i will also kick in the uh, compressor and limiter here so this is what a podcast might sound like this is a recording example yeah like a frequency band setting and then you have uh, for gaming also another variation so far about the PC uh, possibility and also Mac. But now, unfortunately for Mac, the Mayono Arena, which I'm sorry, which I'm going to open right now. This one is not available on Mac by now, but on PC, of course. So here, just to show you, I will um, kind of... You know, here in the sound settings, you have now all these new channels generated by this software in your PC, chat output and game output, all these kind of things. And you can address all these channels here. Actually, I don't really understand why the May Ono is so silent here, because as we saw in the other software, it seems to be quite a, quite a powerful signal, like standard uh, leveling. And here it's only so silent. Nonetheless, this one enables us also to kick in some applause, for example. We don't hear anything. I don't know why. What happened? Uh -huh. Ah, I need to basically change the output here. For example, now we, we have, have this delay, as you can see, in uh, OBS, OBS Studio. And this is now also desktop audio kicking in. But this one enables us to do this applause, for example, when I go back to the Mayono Arena. <laughs> or we can do some cheering. So some examples also you can put in your own samples here so this is pretty much like a mixer that we know already from the live podcasting tools just to have an impression you can uh, route all these things there is other software solutions but maono was producing these things and i hope also that they're going to develop it further also for the mac area so far about the software and sound test was the other software before summary while i wish the mono pd 300x was less susceptible to handling noise this becomes a non-issue once properly installed in a studio setup you can easily add another pop shield if you're not satisfied with the included one's performance alternatively positioning the mic slightly off axis solves this issue as well the sound quality is excellent and the signal to noise ratio is quite acceptable 
That's why I prefer to skip the noise gate included in the software package, as mentioned earlier in the video. Well, now you know, I'm just not a noise gate fan. While the multi-button profile switching on the mic is a clever idea, I find it somewhat fiddly. Honestly, I prefer controlling settings directly through the software interface with visual feedback. Perhaps Mailno should have invested in a more robust housing or better capsule isolation rather than this multi-button feature. Well, it is what it is. Ultimately, you're getting a solid microphone at a reasonable price that's more versatile than its appearance might suggest. Those who work in different recording scenarios will particularly appreciate the ability to capture audio both digitally via USB-C and alternatively through XLR. With this classic XLR output, the PD300X clearly aims at professional audio equipment territory, and if you listen carefully, it's already there. Ew.